Every year, what you can do with a smart home changes drastically. There's new products and services, but every year has a few themes or trends that we can identify and then plan off of. In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the biggest smart home trends coming this year. I'm bringing you this with the knowledge of what's coming to the CES show, what's in a lot of companies' product lineups for 2024, and from a lot of discussions with industry insiders. Some of this is exciting, and some of it is downright concerning. But by the end of today's video, you should be able to plan your home and a few of your purchases. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. Let me get to one of the biggest trends we're gonna see in 2024. This trend is probably best explained through a demo. I'm gonna to talk to ChatGPT on my phone. All right, ChatGPT, here we go. You hit the little headset button, brings this up. Hello, ChatGPT. Hey there, how can I help you today? What would be a good activity for today? Considering the chilly weather, maybe you could enjoy a cozy indoor activity like reading a book or watching a movie. What are you in the mood for? Let's talk about a movie. Great choice. What genre are you in the mood for? Action, comedy, drama, or something else? I think we need to combine action with comedy and it's got to be kid friendly. Got it. Action, comedy, and kid friendly. How about watching The Incredibles? It's an animated film with superheroes, lots of action, and some good laughs. What do you think? Actually, I really like that. Thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy watching The Incredibles. If you have any more questions or want to chat later, feel free to drop by. So I've hit the pause button here and Otherwise, this will sit and listen, and no matter what I'm saying, it's always listening. I also get this great breakdown of the conversation. It's now written in text. I can go back and review different conversations I've had. Now that was an ambient voice experience. It's not perfect, and there are mistakes in the data. There's also mistakes in how it responds and even mistakes in how it listens to you. But the experience is very different from the voice assistants we currently have. It is contextual by nature, and this is the trend that everyone's been looking for. We want our conversations with voice assistants to be driven by the context of our situation. If we're in the grocery store, for example, and we want to know what's on our shopping list, we want that to happen without having to think about the exact syntax that we have to give our voice assistant. As in, what do I need to buy? Instead of, show me my shopping list. Now the trend for 2024 is a resurgence of voice assistants. Amazon, Google, and Apple are all working on their own versions of an AI-based voice assistant, which uses what's called a large language model, or LLM. The ability to get long-winded, detailed, and honestly very complete answers out of these kinds of models are going to drive people to use them. I already used uh, ChatGPT in my home with a smart speaker called Josh AI, and I have to say, I've enjoyed that experience a lot. Give me a recipe for Instant Pot hard boiled eggs. Certainly, here's a simple recipe for making hard boiled eggs in your Instant Pot. Ingredients, eggs, as many as you like. Instructions, place some trivet or steamer basket inside your Instant Pot. But as Google puts Bard into the Google Assistant, Amazon looks at Bedrock and sees if they can stuff it into Miss A, and Apple furthers their admittedly behind research in the space, we will start to see the first smart home voice assistants become conversational and contextual late this year. But before we get to the next trend, I have to pay a few bills. Today's video sponsor is SwitchBot. And if you haven't used SwitchBot in your home, you're missing out. But today we're gonna focus on the upcoming S10 robot vacuum and mop. 
You'll see later in today's video how that product spearheads an entire trend in the smart home industry. Now, the reason I say that is because the S10 won't just be that robot vacuum and mop. It'll also flush the water down your drain automatically, as well as pick up new, fresh water to use with that mopping feature. It'll also pick up fresh water to fill up the new SwitchBot humidifier too. So this is something that can accomplish tasks for you and can turn your home into a perfectly humidified space. You can check out the links to the S10 down below and I'll tell you this is one of the most exciting products coming this year. It was funded on Kickstarter to the tune of $1.2 million. So you'd be joining good company if you decide to pick one up. Now let's get back to the trends coming in 2024. This next one is something that I'm just plain old excited about. And that's because my favorite classes in university were related to robotics. And actually my favorite class in high school was called robotics. And yeah, I had a lot of friends. Seriously though, <laughs> every year we see more and more robots available for us. They show up at CES and other trade shows, and they are in lots of the keynote addresses at those shows. Most of the time, though, the robots we see are for niche use cases, or they're just demo units of companies doing development. But I would say that almost all the time, they're underwhelming and not very useful for the average person. But in the last year, I've seen the tide turn and a number of companies have told me that they are making a play for consumer level robotics. I can't talk about them all yet, but very recently I was reading a report about a consumer level robot that LG had produced. They're working to redefine the smart home industry with a focus on robotics and products that do multiple things in your home. But I can give you one example. That S10 robot vacuum and mop combo, well, I think one of the big reasons it was so well received from backers is that it could do more than just vacuum and mop. That is consumer level robotics in a nutshell. And what I like about it is that it's just an iteration on a working technology. It'll do those multiple things and it will be useful for you, but it's not hard for a company to be successful building off previous tech. This is the path of a number of companies, and I honestly think we'll see a number of robot vacuums get extra jobs. Plus, we'll see these little robots like the one from LG and Amazon, for example. They'll continue to get additional jobs pushed into them. Now you heard me say multiple jobs or multiple things in the last segment. And I'm gonna use an example from a number of smart speakers to illustrate our next trend. Here's an Echo speaker. You use Amazon's voice assistant to request any information you'd like or to adjust your home. There are a few buttons that you can press to take small actions. Now, here's my Echo Show. It's a smart display, so while it has the buttons, the speakers, and the voice assistant, it also has that touch screen. That means a person who is unable to speak or unable to hear is able to interact with the device. The touch screen gives us another method of input. The term that will be incorrectly used sometimes in the industry is multimodal. All the devices I just showed you really are multimodal in a sense, but you're getting an extra input option with the Echo Show. So it won't just be input, it'll be output, and it'll be other ways to interact with our devices. The Humane AI pin that was just released is a great example of this. It has the voice component so you can speak to it, but it also has a little projection slash visual interface that you can use and work with your hands. It's multimodal, and we've already seen multimodal devices for a while from the smart home industry. But this year it's gonna push to another level. It's gonna solve all kinds of accessibility issues alongside issues of convenience. I'm gonna get into some smaller trends that require a little less explanation. So, I'm gonna rapid fire those at you fairly quickly. There will be two additional terms that will be misused as much as the word smart has been over the last five years. AI and machine learning is gonna be featured on almost every major product release because it's associated with your device, learning your habits, or just learning in general. As a consumer, you're gonna to have to watch out because in a lot of cases, it's not really gonna be machine learning or AI. It's gonna be some basic data-driven decisions. 
and it probably means that the company is housing your data somewhere. Last year, we saw presence sensors replace a number of motion sensors, or at least it's been very clear that a presence sensor is much better than motion. This is just the start of what I will call the digital to analog sensor revolution. This is a device that can tell us much more than just someone's in the room. It can actually give us all kinds of details about where that person is, what they're doing, and uh, how fast they're moving even. So there's all kinds of analog information that we can get out of this. And that will continue to happen in the rest of the smart home industry. I won't say the word recession, but it's easy to see that people, at least here in North America, are struggling with finances. There's also been a little bit of burnout. You know, that's from people who normally buy smart home products. It means this year people are gonna be much more careful about the products they're buying. Now, late in the year, I think we're gonna see some desperate sales. Companies are gonna be struggling in the first half of the year. And I've seen this reaction before. When those small to medium sized companies are not getting the sales they need, then we can see really big sales. And if it really does go this way, we'll have a trend in 2025 of some of these companies disappearing. The one thing that the matter standard has started in the smart home industry is a commoditization of certain products. If you walk into a hardware store or even some of the grocery stores today, you find a lot of smart lighting and you probably won't even recognize a lot of the brands. Just about everyone can get a smart bulb or plug made through a company called Tuya. Early in 2023, Wemo, they even came out and stated that they would stop creating some of their smart products as things like smart switches were a commodity now and there was really no profit in it. This is something that will continue to deepen in 2024. The basics of a smart home will be commodities and the market will be fierce. I think I just got everything in my home updated to 4K resolution, but something that companies are starting to turn towards when they talk about streaming televisions and monitors is 8K. I've seen it being a part of file type specifications or streaming specs for a little while now and it's making its way into hardware components. So I don't think you need to run out and purchase anything 8K in 2024. And I actually feel like it's a bit of a waste, but this will be a trend you'll see on releases. This one's hard to explain, but as the components start to come together, I think this is going to be something that's talked about a lot and will become a trend driven by people's desire for these features. Now, one of the best features of the Amazon Echo Buds and the Echo Frames is what Amazon calls multi-point connectivity. Now, I've demonstrated this in the past, but it means that you can have these connected to multiple Bluetooth devices at the same time. So your phone and the Fire Stick in your home, for example. Now that's not new, but when coupled with what's called a Bluetooth AuraCast, a technology just being released to a few Samsung televisions, you can have a pretty wild Bluetooth setup in your home. AuraCast allows a single source device, like a television, to connect to multiple Bluetooth speakers. So you and I could each have our own Echo Buds in our ears or Echo Frames on our face. And each of those could be playing at whatever volume we'd like and potentially with even different audio tracks. So we could be listening in different languages. Just that alone will provide all kinds of accessibility options. But when you think about that multi-point connectivity combined with something like this, it is essentially unlimited Bluetooth connectivity going on in your home. This is a trend that will start to show up this year and it'll be impressive, but we still need methods to control whether or not our echo frames sitting on our face are going to be getting the audio stream from a television that was just turned on. So it won't be perfect, but you might just go to a movie in 2024 where you can use your echo buds or echo frames. To say the matter standard had a checkered 2023 would be an understatement. It was met with big excitement by many people including myself. It ushered in a new age of connectivity for smart home products, or at least that was the stated goal of Matter. It's supposed to be an easy way to connect and control your smart home gear. Now before Matter, and really still today, it is hard to know if a product will work with your 
favorite app or other smart home products in your home. But what happened last year is in quarters two and three, we saw a number of products released with Matter certification. They generally were not well received as connectivity was problematic and the features we were getting were lacking at best. This caused a reaction by all of your favorite smart home companies. They made different decisions individually, but a lot of them took their Matter product releases that were coming later in the year and either delayed them or shifted the technology being used to connect to the rest of your smart home. So in 2024, we will see a return with many companies using previous connectivity technologies like Zigbee and Z-Wave or even basic Wi-Fi and Thread. It's not that we won't see Matter product releases and it's not that that standard is dead, but I have been asked multiple times by companies what technology they should be using this year. Everyone's a little confused, but some of those companies that are really experienced, well, they've already shifted how they're doing things this year as we all wait for Matter's connectivity, reliability, and features to improve. I would call this the biggest trend of 2024, and it's a little bit based on what I just talked about with Matter. In fact, I call this the changing of the guard, and it's coming from a combination of things that have been going on for years. Large, publicly funded companies have to find high profit markets because they're constantly driving to shareholder value and earnings per share. The smart home space was a big focus for a number of years, but reality has sunk in. And unfortunately, that means these big companies will leave markets, they'll cancel product lineups, and even kill entire segments of their company. We've watched drastic personnel reductions at lots of the larger companies. And we're hearing now that Signify, who owns Philips Hue and Wiz brands, will be reducing headcount this year right away. That comes on the heels of Amazon reducing headcount. And we know that this has affected other large companies with their own smart home or voice assistant teams. I think we can all feel the pullback from companies like Samsung and we've all seen how cautious Apple has been. Another great example is what Google has done, which is to attempt to buy ADT and then pair their devices with a high profit security subscription. They just aren't free to make okay money. They have to go get that big dollar stuff. Personally, it's kind of stupid, but maybe that's why I'm not a CEO. And actually, wait a second, I am a CEO. I can make myself that and I just did it. Anyways, what this is leading us to is the changing of the guard to the small and medium to medium large size companies that are not publicly traded. So companies like Switchbot, Acara, Govee, TP-Link, Wise, Nanoleaf and others, they're going to become the main providers in your home. They have a good foothold in the industry and a good set of product designers, engineers, and strong marketing teams. They have a business model that works and they have profits that work for a private company. I can't wait. And I'm betting lots of you are getting excited now that you've heard the trends happening this year. But if you'd like to evaluate how good I am at this, go watch last year's video which is on screen now. You'll see all the different trends that I identified and you'll be able to tell me how close I was. Otherwise, thanks for watching today and of course, live smart.